So my talk, um, let's see. Um, for, first of all, happy birthday, processing community. And thanks a lot, uh, Tim, for inviting me, um, especially because I'm not um, a processing expert. Um, but I, I, as Tim said, I think there, there are a lot of um, um, yeah, ideas that we share. So um, I'm Martin, and I'm from Two Points Net. It's a really small studio. Uh, we are just three persons. Um, the um, the big heads there there are Lupi and me, and um, we are in Hamburg. And the um, the small one on the right bottom corner that's Ilio. He's in Barcelona, and we ourselves we um, are um, as well often in in Barcelona and, and teach there in the master and then bachelor uh, degree. So my warning to you first. Of all, I'm not a uh, processing expert, but I'm a proud creative coder. Um, what I mean with this, I hope to uh, be able to show you in this um, short lecture. Um, uh, creative coding or, or creative code, or as I call it, flexible visual systems, is um, what I'm interested in. Um, and um, there are lots of things around that theme that that interests me and um, the learn teach apply triangle is something that keeps us motivated at two points and keeps me motivated um the learn experience was really um is something that really keeps us uh, going we never want to stop learning um we always want to learn new things and um and thanks to to tim i i, I learned uh, a lot about processing and started to use it more and more in um, projects of two points. Um, but I'm also really interested in, in, in theory in general and not just uh, new theory, but um, also old theory. Um, so I wrote, um, I, I made a PhD dissertation, a doctoral dissertation about systems in graphic design, but then I started to go back into the history of type design as well and topography and analyze the, uh, the systems that we're using. Um, I'm really into motion design as well, because um, traditionally it has been separated from communication design, but I think that nowadays we can't really live without it anymore. So um, it's really something also that found, um, that, that is like at the center as well of Two Points uh, work. Um, then, we teach flexible systems and uh, type design, but uh, type design for not uh, for text typefaces, but for visual identities, uh, typography um, at the KBK, where um, I graduated as well from, um, but a long time ago, uh, 2001. Um, teach workshops, courses, lots of different things. And everything that we learn, we apply as well at uh, two points or self-initiated projects in visual identities, editorial design and type design. So this is um, a bit the kind of um, motivating triangle that we found for ourselves to uh, keep us up to date, but as well interested in what we do um, every day. Um, okay, about teach. So I think this is a really, um interesting uh way to start the, um, showing you some projects um for my last course at the kvk uh, that's the kvk uh and these are um projects by or sketches by uh, my students this is from andon and um this from Kashka, it's also from Kashka, and this is um, from some, and this is also made with, this one is made with processing. But I just wanted to show you these different works because what we are most proud of is that in every of the projects, you can find a flexible system, um, but every system looks very different. So the tools that they use, the programs that they use, the coding language that they use, this is all um, different. And the aesthetics are also really different. So what we are most proud of is that we are helping them 
um, our students to find their own way um, of um, working the tools that they want to choose but as well the aesthetics that are right for the project but what's at the core of um, my classes is that i teach them a different way of thinking so they don't think anymore in only uh, a poster or only a book cover but they think of a visual language that can be applied in many different ways so a system that is really flexible and applied in very different ways and um yeah, this is some more, and often it ends up in, in type, but it can be made with a Blender and uh, or in a font program or with processing or um, so it's um, very a lot of different ways. If you want to have a look at it, you can go to Instagram and uh, check out this um, account um, TS for typographic systems two for it because it's the second year, which I find uh, to be honest really amazing that they're capable of doing these things uh, in the second year in Kabika because it's at the Kabika. So now a little bit about um, our work at uh, twopoints.net and uh, to show you as well how we apply the knowledge about um, flexible systems. Um, it's not just a difficulty uh, to design a flexible visibility, uh, uh, flexible system, but also um, how to apply it. And when we design um, visual identities for our clients, then um, one problem is always how are they going to keep on working with a visual identity? Um, and there it's really helpful to build tools. Um, one of the clients that we worked um, a lot with is ESPN. This is a um, sport um, channel, or they have a lot. They had a magazine, they have um, TV channels, they have, um, yeah, they have lots of different things. And they have an in house team, in house design team, which is huge. So they don't really need um, to have, they don't really need finished design of us. What they need is tools that we can give them so they can work with these tools and design themselves and one really easy way for us as well to um to build a tool is to to make fonts so uh, we design fonts that are easy to lay out with um uh, here you can see one that we did for them um that is not mono space like but like dual space you can see it in the e and the x um that there are like two different widths and you just have to type actually and um and you get all these different kinds of variations of layouts so i'm showing you here a couple of layouts and this is just layouts that they have to type so then don't really have to start designing and um but they can just type any kind of text or leave a space or um use an alternative um a letter for this uh, and, and, and ready is the design and um, it is much if the tool is much easier to apply then um, probably also they will use it more um, yeah there are just some different kinds of layouts that we did for them here and then the, here's the project that um, uh, that Tim as well worked on, um, and we also built a tool for this. It's called Yum Negra, which is a Catalan um, for um, black light. And this was an exhibition at the uh, uh, CCCB, uh, the Museum for Contemporary Art in Barcelona, just in the city center, and um, they had an exhibition about. 70s psychedelic art and um it was called black light because there was as well a lot of um um well art that's by um, um psychedelic but as well from occultism and it, it was a huge mix of different kinds of things and the um, brief was to visualize um black light so we were thought thinking about this gradient from um more light to less light and in this modular system so when we um 
and then we approached uh, Tim to um, to help us build a, a code, or he built this uh, the, this tool for us, which um, is a grid system um, tool that uh, I'm sure many of you uh, know as well from Tim's uh, courses. Um, that allows um, us, but as well everyone interested in in this exhibition, to build their own graphics and. Um, here you see different options that you have, and we used um, this modular system to make a, a, a font for the exhibition, um, a very distinctive font. So anytime that someone would write something with this font, you would instantly uh, recognize or remember um, this exhibition, um, but not just the type with it, we also did a couple of uh, graphics like here on the left you can see um, as well that we did a frame where you could put stuff inside so this is always what we do we try to um, create a big library of different possibilities how to um, use this visual language uh, but as well in different kinds of formats and i think this already shows that the way of thinking um, is um, is substantially different to the way how visual identities were done in the past when um, people were just designing like one logo and the logo was applied already uh, the same way to different kinds of um, formats and media, um, but it always kept the same to this kind of approach, which is trying to be um, responsive to the different formats. Uh, then we applied as well color um, to this elements and did different kinds of posters with it. Um, yeah, lots of different items. They also had um, flyers and everything. And, and this tool uh, not just became a design tool, um, but also it became a marketing tool because um, um, Tim um, programmed um, as well a P5JS solution that people could um, use on the website of the museum and then they could make their own design, download an image and then upload it uh, to their social media account and um, the best solutions or the best images they won um, then a, a tote bag and, um, and a notebook so we try to as well to convince the client that this uh, building tools um, has several possibilities. Well, this is still something that we're working on that clients see why it's worth it to invest time and money into um, um, yeah, coding tools. And this is an animation that um, Tim did that they showed um, in the entrance of the museum. Okay, so now we're coming to another project that um, works differently, um, but you will recognize that the kind of um, letters, they look a little bit, little bit alike. So this is a visual identity that we did for the Center for Complexity. Uh, this is a, a lab from the Rhode Island School of Design, RISD, um, and they um, work on, on uh, super interesting uh, subjects always uh, society related. Right now, we are working um, on a project with them that is going to take. Um, well, it's going to take a lot of years. Two thousand forty-five is the end date for this project. Um, it's for the um, demolition of um, all nuclear weapons, and it's a really ambitious um, project. Um, but the, the, the idea of the center and why they're called Center for Complexity is that they think that um, reality has to be understood in its complexity and, um, uh, and, and, and shouldn't be um, simplified because the simplification already means that um, certain aspects of the problem are um, not um, recognized and, and therefore the solution is also un, 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 unlikely to be found. So they want to understand reality in its complexity and 
um, the identity that we made for them also had to be complex um, aesthetically. So we would visualize as well this idea of complexity. So we thought that um, what they actually propose is, a, is an approach um, to uh, problem solving, um, a strategic design um, approach. Um, and what they have is their methodology, but the content is always changing. So we were thinking of a container, which you can see on the left, which um, are like the, the variables that can be um, filled with always different kinds of pieces. But it's important that these pieces are, um, that the style is really eclectic, that it's like that they're coming from different kinds of nature. So we built this huge library of, um of different kinds of um graphics um some we drew uh some are randomly um uh, created um and some coming from photographies uh some are yeah some look really chaotic and some look natural and organic and others look really um rational um and then we had this kind of um logic for the distribution of the of the elements and um and it was yeah and then because we we did this with uh, smart components in glyphs it was really easy to render um lots of different versions of this font so there are over 10 that they can use for the different kinds of communications um these are some of the business cards um and these are some of the the posters that we did for them and as everything that you can see here is um is a font um and we did this in cinema 4d it's really easy to update this uh cinema 4d file and you just have to type a different letter or choose a different font and then it's a different poster so I think you see already a little bit that our approach is as well um, um, trying to work as well with um, with easy updatable um, solutions and think in variables that clients can easily um, uh, manipulate and, and create new versions of it. So yeah, that's a um, couple of different posters that they needed for lectures at the RISD. Um, then because it's a, a design school, we could be a little bit more weird and illegible with a with a font. Um, and some other posters where they explained as well what each um project is on i think now they have uh like 10 different kinds of uh, projects they're working on um and then um what um last but not least uh something that um tim mentioned already in the beginning um this is um it this is a really a huge thing for me this book because um I, um, when I finished at the KBK, um, I, um, well, I had classes with, uh, with Peter van Blockland and, um, and, and, um, I really got into flexible systems and coding and, um, in design and, and all these, uh, these thought processes behind. And, um, this is something that really marked as well, the way of thinking in my practice and, um, I, I, I wanted to back then, I already wanted to make a book about it because there was not much out there. And it was really like in the beginning of the 2000s, the time when everybody was talking about dynamic identities and there were only two books out about it, but there was also no real, uh, scientific research about it. Now there are uh, lots of master thesis about dynamic identities, but there was not much, um, out there. Um, so in 2005, I, um, um, I went to Barcelona and, 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 and mid, did first the master degree um, and then in design research uh, or theoretical is another, um, um, and, uh, and then did a PhD and um, 
I researched about the, um, the history of uh, flexible systems in communication design, but also went back, as I mentioned before, to, to the history of typography. And, um, and I made a PhD, which has, you can download it, but it has 800 pages and it's quite illegible and um, it's hard to read. So what I wanted to do is all these years um, to make a book, which is really hands-on so that my students could take and then they could learn about how to design flexible systems. And that is so open that you can choose for yourself if you're going to use processing to um, implement your system, or if you, you could use anything, you could take a brush or you could take a, I don't know, any program. Um, so this is why Tim as well called this the, like the bridge in between traditional graphic design and um, creative coding because um, it really connects the the two ways of thinking. Um, and uh, yeah, and um, I did a Kickstarter campaign which really surprised me. Um, I thought it's going to be tough and we thought that um, oof, it's going to be hard to get all this money together. Um, and we thought that um, that we won't be able to get more than 40,000. And at the end, we got over 40,000, which is amazing. So now I'm able to, to finally uh, print this book and distribute it. And there's a um, huge part, which is uh, theory, but it's not the kind of um, PhD theory, but something that's really hands-on um, ideas and uh, concepts that you can use for designing flexible systems for visual identities. There's a part um, that is talking about form-based um, flexible systems, um, probably a little bit more the traditional kind of um, design because, and then there's a third part as well uh, about transformative uh, systems. And this is something that really connects with um, with creative coding, and yeah, and that's that's just an impression. Uh, you will see more of it in the future, I'm sure. So thanks a lot for listening. Um, I don't know if I was too quick or too slow, <laughs> Tim. I didn't check the time. <laughs> uh, you you were no, that's totally fine. It's it's really cool. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Martin. That was amazing. And I forgot to basically tell a little bit about how I came in touch with your work, because that's already quite a long time ago. And um, I was a big fan of, of your studio already 10 years ago. So when I studied, Two Points was kind of also something like an unreachable design studio, publishing books, uh, doing this amazing special um, design approach. And uh, yeah, and then one day you just got in touch with me when I was a tutor in uh, for design basics in Münster because you asked for a specific book that I've posted onto this blog. And I can tell you how this, this fell for me because you really was one of my heroes at the time, to be honest. So, um, this yeah. is so this is so weird to hear because on one hand, it's um, I'm blushing uh, because <laughs> I'm uh it's so many nice things but it also makes me feel really old <laughs> really? <laughs> oh okay. no worries <laughs> no okay so i'm sorry i didn't want to 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 bring you into such a situation no 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 it's all I just fine want to point out this because for me it was just like such an inspiration and i'm so happy that we are now in touch and that we are just doing things together and um i don't know if the people here in the audience know that but i um decided to go back to university and do Besides of teaching masters, I also do a master at the moment, which is a little bit strange. I do a master in digital media and experiment in uh, Bielefeld. And um, in this master studies, I have to do an um, internship and I've, I will do this the internship in the next semester in, at two points. So and I'm super happy that this is possible and I guess we will work a lot on really, really cool stuff. I can't wait for that. And um, yeah, yeah, so cool. No, me too. And it's... Um... I mean, in the beginning of the lecture, when I was explaining the triangle of learn, teach, apply, when I was saying about um, the community or or um, or having uh, regular meetings, I was as well specifically thinking in you because um, I also don't know if this uh, the audience knows this, but we um, in, in in Corona times, well, we're still in Corona times, but we we uh, we had coffees and. Um, 
and you were so generous to uh, to teach me uh, processing and um, mm -hmm. and it's um, there's no bigger joy for me than um, learning new stuff uh, and um, yeah because it changes the way as well of thinking and that's that's the most interesting thing for me yeah and as I said I mean I really say uh, I mean all the people know that but um, uh, I really see so many um, touch points between what you do and what I do. And that's that's the cooler thing about it. And yeah, I, I really I'm really looking forward for the next time and um, yeah, seeing what what comes out of this whole thing. It's really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. me too. Um, there's a lot of um, there are a lot of uh, connections. Um, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So we have some questions. Let me just see. Uh, and by the way, you can now post more questions because we don't have enough yet <laughs> so we still have 20 minutes until Casey joins and um, mm -hmm. yeah so or is he already in the room no <laughs> there's no one in the room yet okay um, yeah Cuban B says congrats to the book Martin yeah I'm looking forward to receive the book yes me too um, the book is book is a must-have yeah that's what I also see think Okay, Stigmola Hansen asked a question um, and he says, so Martin, designing tools rather than artifacts, how do you think having to think in terms of systems influence the visual style of design products? Will design by systems be predictable or and boring or? And then I was asking him, what do you exactly mean? Because I didn't understand that question and mm -hmm. then he answered, It hints at what happens when designers think in terms of systems. Are their creativity and expression limited to systems con constraints? No, not at all. I mean, I, I think that um, I, I think well, systems is not nothing else than a set of rules that decide how um, to do things. You know how um, mm. the properties of Of, design, of the elements that you're using, how they interact with each other, how they interact with the context that they're, or the context they are placed in. So um, it's, it's nothing else than a, than a set of rules that you that you make. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that maybe when people think in systems, they think it's about something that is um, that that cannot change, or that is always the same, or maybe even grids that always look the same. But mm -hmm. um, I think you can see it as well if you go to the Instagram account of, of my students, how freely they think about systems. So um, when we when we think about um, creative coding, we, we are, um, I think most of the times we're thinking in how to instruct a machine, but you could also in how to think about how to instruct humans. And mm -hmm. then the outcome would be as well very different. And maybe the tools would be different too. But this is still a system for me. Like if you think in the work of, of Monica and their conditional uh, yep. design definition, then I think this is um, this is coding or this is uh, this is systems as well for me. Um, but they don't look like it. So um, I, I even was thinking about like mm, when I'm teaching is putting one exercise up, design a system that doesn't look like a system. Because I think that there... Sometimes um, you think all has to be modular, or um, but it doesn't really has to be. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's also empowering to 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 think about the systems that we are using because we are so used to to use the uh, the kind of programs that everybody uses. Or uh, maybe if you start out um, coding, to think in tutorials that you're using. But if you break that barrier and if you just think freely about this as a visual language to express yourself, um, which, of course, has its own logic. I mean, this is what we need uh, for visual identities uh, to be identifiable, recognizable and understandable for um, the um, all the team members as well that work with it. Um, But if we break that um, barrier, then then you can do anything that you can put into a sentence um, that you can define mm -hmm. as something. So mm -hmm. my my aim is my goal is that um, people 
uh, start just thinking in, in, in this kind of rules, but that these rules can be anything. So it could lead you, uh, it could be just a set of instructions that lead you to do a carpet or a sculpture or, or anything. And yep. I also really hope that, that, that this is something that people embrace because I don't think that uh, communication design or graphic design will be always just the logo in the upper left corner. I think uh, graphic design could be as well a sculpture or an exhibition or a, a voice talking to you. Um, I think we have to maybe um, think less about the term graphic design and think more about the term communication design and we use everything for communicating. Uh, so yeah, I think it's um, it's going to give us actually more freedom at the end uh, than restrictions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great answer, I think. Um, I would like to add that I feel like designing the system itself is an extremely creative process. And um, I mean, so the, the system itself is in the middle of the design process. So you create a system and the system creates outcomes, right? So um, I don't feel that designing systems or working with systems is in any way, um, uh, let's say, restricting. It is a very, very creative process, which inherits so many surprises, because when the system starts to generate stuff, you interact with the system and you are in a, in a yeah in an interactive process with the system, which is extremely exciting. So yeah. um, I always perceive this as a dialogue with a computer or, you know, with an analog algorithm. I don't know, but I think this is really cool and enhances the design process so, yeah. uh, significantly. Yeah. Yeah. No, it totally is. And also, I I'd always try to as well to explain as well that I think that it's important to be able um, to, to think in open systems, which means systems that uh, can be evolved in the future. Mm -hmm. um, because what we can see, I mean, I'm always um, looking at this from the perspective of a communication design and graphic design and visual identities. Mm -hmm. But I remember perfectly when all the brands, they had to redesign their brands because mm -hmm. the systems that they used didn't allow them to evolve. And this is a huge waste of energy. And um, and maybe it has to do something with um, the egocentric perspective of the designer that doesn't want its design to change. But I think um, mm -hmm. now that everything became much more flexible and is changing on on all different kinds of uh, formats, um, media, and as well the according to the context in which it is shown, the the time and the people looking at it. So there's a huge amount of flexibility that the things that you design they need to be flexible. And if you think as well about time, like how does this identity needs to evolve? And, in, in the longer term in order to stay relevant, then I think this is a really interesting task for a designer to be that open, to design something that can live and, and keep on growing as well. Working with um, bigger teams, more people, you know, so it's um, different perspectives. And I think this is um, a good thing for, for everyone. Um, Mm -hmm. that it's uh, evolving the de design definition of a visual identity. Absolutely. Yeah. So we have some questions here also in the chat. Uh, Thomas Mac, let me just, I have a very strong glasses, so I have to, <laughs> but even with my strong glass, I have to go very close here to the chat. <laughs> Mac Elmiel, Thomas Mac Elmiel asks, hi, Martin, how do you have any advice or do you have any advice on how to get further involved in creative coding spaces? I sometimes feel like I'm a little on my own here in Midwest US. Okay, um, creative coding spaces. What do you mean with that, Thomas? <laughs> uh, Maybe that's a question for you, Tim. I don't know. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, I guess you want to connect with people who just have the same, you know, learning process, learn the same stuff. So maybe online. Why don't you connect with people online? So um, by the way, I'm offering an online community for creative coding. There is an amazing Facebook group where people post stuff. And yeah, just attend to meetups, go to connect with people. Um, maybe you can go to the Creative Coding Festival of Vera. Um, yeah, just connect with people through Instagram. Um, maybe you can just... 
uh, follow the people. Oh, I've got a great list with many Instagram channels to follow. I will put it in the chat later on. Um, and maybe that's a good kickoff for connecting with people. I'm not sure if there's a community for creative coding that is local in your in, in the USA where you are located, but maybe you can also take a look at it or you find a friend who is up for a sparring in this sphere of creative coding and that is very helpful. That's what I did with Patrick, right? So that was super, super helpful to get to, 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 yeah, to, to, to have some progress and get further. All right, so here's another one by day by, um, let me just see, David Liebert. Martin, how does the future look for traditional designers that don't get on the creative coding bandwagon? Um, well, I mean, I think it's, um, um, mm, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm a bit careful with, uh, with this, this question because I mean, I, it's, it's easy to say that they, that they're going to be obsolete and, or it's that they have to jump on that train. Otherwise they're going to be irrelevant and, uh, their job won't exist anymore in the future, because I think that, um, that or I, I never had i mean and there's people that are scared of text or code but I, I never met anyone that doesn't understand the system idea it's just that the tools or the way how they make their system changes uh, and uh, i remember perfectly as well in one of the courses someone that had difficulties to um get their head around um Stig said it before really nicely, the, the contrast in between the, the artifact design, which is just designing one piece and not thinking about how this piece could change in the future in different contexts and not thinking mm -hmm. in it as a, like a variable thing. Um, um, and, and yeah, she had difficulties to think not just in the, in the, in the painting that she's painting, but to think in a rule that could paint a million paintings. And um, um, and for her, the way was then just, just to think of a couple of instructions for her friends and then invite her friends and let them um, uh, follow her instruction book. It's like uh, making mm -hmm. a, a cooking recipe. And um, and I think it's, it's just important to change your way of thinking, of doing things, because I think that you can't really get far anymore if you're designing the artifact. You have to think in... Um, the system or the rules or the instructions as well yeah. beyond that artifact and i think this everybody can do and i would also recommend for everyone to um to look into creative coding but i don't think it's a, a problem if this is just an excursion and you're not going to be a, a coder at the end but it most definitely will change your way of thinking it doesn't matter what kind of language you will use later or which kind of tool or software I think this is a, a valuable lesson for for anyone. Um, yep. So yeah, I would I would definitely say uh, jump on the coding train, but don't get frustrated if uh, if this is not the thing. This doesn't mean that you're not going to be relevant. It's just that maybe you didn't found your tool to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's great. I, I'm going to do something crazy now. I'm going to post about 100 Instagram links now to the chat. <laughs> um, hope this won't break the whole thing. Ah, oh, it does. <laughs> Shit. Okay, I gotta undo that. Okay, I, I will find another way to post to share that list uh, later on. But um, yeah, um, cool. More questions for Martin. So, what do you enjoy more, teaching or creating yourself? Or is the combination, or is it the combination of both? Yeah, yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy both um, immensely because, um, and I also enjoy a lot. I mean, I, before I was talking, I was saying to Vera that I, that uh, the PhD was the hardest experience that I had, mm -hmm. but um, I, it's also something that I, I enjoy a lot as well is to to research about um, different things and learn different things, and then. It's really for me the cycle that as soon as I understood something um, and I might have learned it from um, the research or um, from um, yeah from the practice, I like to apply as well than in teaching. 